All right. Welcome, everyone, to the ELS Network uh, community call Thursday, October 17th. It's our distinct pleasure to have the team from Agoric uh, today uh, with us. We're pretty excited about this. So I'd like to introduce Dean, who is the uh, co-founder and CEO of Agoric. Uh, we're going to have a, a lot to talk about today. Pretty exciting. Uh, we just announced our partnership yesterday. And then we also have uh, Mitchell, who is a uh, co-founder for Ells Network along with us today. He'll have his camera on shortly. But uh, with that said, I'd love for Dean to introduce himself and kind of tell us a little bit about uh, Agoric as we get started here. Sure. So I am Dean Tribble. I say I am CEO of Agoric. And um, uh, we and, it, and uh, one of the co-founders, we've been working for quite some time building a platform to make it easy to coordinate the activity of uh, multiple chains and really build cross-chain applications or extend existing applications and services with cross-chain access. And that's what uh, got us connected because that fits so well with what you guys are doing. Um, and, and so we enable building these smart contracts that can, that can provide what we call orchestration um, to really make for end-to-end -end user experiences that you know, the user can, can just you know, authorize one complex multi-stage thing that crosses chains and get what they want instead of having to piece it together from low-level things that they don't quite understand. So very excited to be working with you guys. Outstanding. Thank you so much. And for our community members who are maybe hearing about Agoric for the first time, can you speak a little bit about like when you started development, uh, what uh, got you interested in, in this particular space, uh, and why you guys chose the mission you chose? Sure. Uh, and then maybe just talk about some of the things you're working on right now as well. <laughs> so um, I started, we, you know, I got interested in crypto um, many, many years ago, worked on the first production smart contract back in 1989. So long term, the vision has always been um, uh, software that enables strangers to cooperate, right? Smart contracts are you know, software that enforces the terms of a contract-like arrangement between third parties. And that's what enables, you know, eBay, PayPal, Venmo, those were all smart contract businesses before blockchain. And so that enable, has enabled, you know, millions or billions of people to cooperate that otherwise might not have. And that's just really empowering. That's just really valuable to be able to do that stuff. And blockchain came along and, and, and made that possible on steroids. And so we were founded in 2018 with, you know, in response to security vulnerabilities, difficulties, you know, the very tribal nature and all these kinds of things that were happening in, in, in blockchain generally. Um, and uh, to, you know, really bring a, you know, Web3 centric cross chain view of, of, of what apps are like, right? You know, prior to this, um, have, uh, you know, the team has literally, you know, decades of building, you um, Cross service infrastructure in the in the you know traditional world in tradfi in 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 you know large scale e commerce and that kind of thing and that same model of you know trillions of dollars every day are controlled by you know small contracts that drive microservices you know that drive services across different vendors that model clearly is going to be a core model for web3 going forward but only if someone can bring bring the right way to do that wiring and so that's what we bring is that expertise of having done that before um to how do we solve these problems problems and enable the user to have a simple experience of things even though what's going on underneath is very interesting and complex that is, that is a great background and I think this is one of the reasons why we're excited to work with you because we share that same focus on, you know, the user experience, making it something that the user can actually uh, uh, take advantage of to essentially be more productive or get the most out of the experience when it comes to interacting with all these different chains. What I think is really interesting over the last few years is as we move to this multi-chain world, a lot of people see it as a challenge, right? That, that, oh my gosh, we have to connect all these chains together and figure out how to make them speak the same language, et cetera. But it almost seems like for Agoric, that's the opportunity. Like you see multi-chain yes, as an opportunity rather, rather than a hurdle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part, I mean, partly it's a challenge in all these other systems, right? They start, their design, their focus, their, their, their center of what they enable is programs that start and end within a single block, right? I can do a swap 
in an instant where the world stops and I get to do my swap and then the world continues and you get to do yours, right? And that model, you know, simplifies some things, but it's just not how the rest of the world works. And so what you actually have is the much more messy world of, of multiple different things happening at different times in different places. You need to do asynchronous coordination and herd all of these cats in order to present a simple experience to users, right? And, and that's, our expertise, that's what we've done in a wide variety of contexts. That's what we know how to do in blockchain. And it's taken quite a while to build that. But it, but we have a unique platform that enables what I call multi-block actions, right? That enables, you know, a contract to writing a simple contract that reaches out to one chain and says, okay, unstake my stuff. You know, and seven days later when it's unstaked, now move it over here and swap it for another thing, send it over to Ellis and do some automated staking with it or, you know, whatever it is, right? You know, the, these these steps that cross a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things. For us, those are simple in the same way that people do that all the time in, in traditional web services, right? Um, they do that all the time, mostly with JavaScript to do async await where you've got the, you know, reach out to that service, find out what the user status is, go over to here, get their account information, trigger a transfer. When it lands over here, do something with it. Right. And that, you know, we do, we do literally trillions of dollars a day, you know, every day and everything from Bloomberg terminals to Salesforce to, to all the automations that run on AWS for this sort of thing, all written in, in a, you know, safe subset of JavaScript. Yeah, this is absolutely exciting. It's unlocking a world of possibilities here. And the great thing is whether it's the project itself that creates these, um, you know, these contracts that, that can interact with various chains and, you know, like you're saying, they can be sequential in terms of, okay, I want this step to occur. Once that step's completed, I want the next step to occur. You can write this all in a single smart contract. Uh, the yeah. great thing about this is not just teams that can take advantage of this. It's the individual user that can customize this and get the programmability that they need. So, yeah. I mean, the, the possibilities are literally infinite depending on how you want to customize this. Now, as far as the interface goes for a, for a user, do you foresee this being a very, very simple like front end process where a user can get on the app, uh, whatever, uh, you know, whether it's a website or an app uh, through Agoric and say, okay, here's the six steps I want, you know, in the single smart contract and boom, execute it and kind of, mm -hmm. um, you know, attach it to my wallet, so to speak. Do you, do you foresee it being that simple of a process? Um, so the answer is eventually yes. Our focus right now, though, is um, enabling that, you know, there's a lot of, points where right now users come to contact web three services. Um, and, you know, and the web three applications are extremely limited because it's so hard for them to leverage other systems. Right. And, and, uh, and so our focus right now is, you know, applications that are out there, you know, the, the trading applications, the staking applications, the management applications, the ones that have users, those users are asking for cross chain support. Right. You know, love your perps app, but my money's over here. Can you make it easy or love your app? You know, it's got a yield for me. I now want to deploy it into into that fund over there that someone just rolled out. Right. You don't you know, how, how do I make all that happen easily? And and how does someone who's offering that service to end users make that fold that up into their current experience to extend their current experience? So our focus is is, you know, folks like uh, like you guys, like Ellis, that have a particular, you know, user interaction, they have a set of users, they have a, you know, a, a scope of functionality that can then be enhanced by writing an orchestration that includes functionality from that other service that someone just rolled out and enables automated bridging of their funds from ETH to transfer over here and swap for whatever the required local token is or the token they wanted to be staked in or the, the, the thing they wanted yield in or the NFT they wanted to purchase or whatever it is, right? That ability to do that plumbing as part of an app that already has users, those apps are the ones that are hearing, hey, I need these additional requirements and if they're going to deliver it, it had better be simple. I mean, right now, the amount, you know, we start with like the simple use case. I have USDC burning a hole in my pocket and I want, you know, well, my usual example is stake Celestia token, but, you know, I want I want anything of that player. I want an NFT. I want a ticket. You know, I want a position, in, you know, in a, in, a, in a yield optimizer, that sort of thing. Right now, people have to take their money, move their money, transform it into another token, move it to the destination chain, then make the request they want. And if they could just have something that said, yeah, do that for me. My money's over there. Go figure it out, right? That 
enables developers to provide simple experiences to end users. And, and so that's the first thing. Several developers are interested in providing, you know, no code stuff for users to put their strategy. The other thing is, it's just JavaScript. We can run JavaScript on chain, being able to upload. Here's the strategy the user wanted. Just run it for me once. Um, you know, those things are all possibilities. But the focus is, is working with builders and enabling them to build bigger, faster applications that cross chains and bring these simple use cases to users. Yeah, I, I absolutely love this. I think this is such a key piece too of the of the whole mass adoption dilemma, right? That everyone's talking about right now is how do we actually make this something where people can take advantage of it? You know, find it to be a little bit easier for them to kind of make that leap into the Web three space. And uh, you know, Agoric is is one of the leading partners in terms of how that's going to happen, right? You're you're going to make it. You're going to give the tools, put it right in their hands, and they're going to be able to to do things that are very uh, intuitive, right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna seem difficult, even though the, maybe the complexity of the code underneath might be, might be you know, outside of their, their knowledge, they can still interact with it in a way that allows them to do everything they need to do. Mm -hmm. So not just on an uh, individual level, which of course we all wanna see a lot of retail um, you know, participation, but really too on the kind of like the professional and institutional level, like kind of like you mentioned, you know, all these major uh, corporations that have been already using similar types of technologies in the old school world, you know, the corporate world, are, are now going to be able to migrate over to Web3 and do the same thing uh, on blockchain. So I think everybody's kind of trying to feel it out, trying to, uh, trying to figure out how to dip their toe in the water, and this is going to be a great way for them to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And another great thing about it, too, is it's not like they have to take big risks with, uh, with this type of um, technology, right? You don't have to use it necessarily for you know, a large DeFi function. It could be something small. It could be simple, simple staking functions like a, like a restaking, for example. Right. So right now, um, you know, within the Cosmos space, you do have to use like Auth Z if you want to enable some sort of restaking, or you got to go through like Yieldmos or, or some or some third party. But you could take that control of it yourself and just simply do like an automatic restaking uh, whenever you wanted to, based on what the command you put in via Agoric. So or, or, I really or, like or that. Pain also could say, here's my restaking button, click here to stake, and oh, by the way, get compounding automatically, right? You know, and- I and, love that. You know, and, and that's one of the things where, where you, know, you know, getting that as a toolkit, someone can roll that out and deploy it, or, you know, any of these chains could build it. You know, it, it's one of those things where, where so we shipped last week the, the, the orchestration API, maybe two weeks ago. The orchestration API is up, it's in production, and it has these fundamental transfer stuff around, do staking, check my balance, automatically restake. You know, the, you know that, the, that ability to build that is now in the API now deployed on chain. It's also in the test net that connects to your test net. So <laughs> let's talk about what we can do with, you know, with Ellis, because there's some very cool stuff you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This, and this is what we're excited about is, you know, adding to our feature set is obviously we already have a focus on uh, the simplifying the user experience through wallet abstraction. But then the next step there is we also incorporate the, the advances in technology with chain abstraction. So the idea is for an Ellis user to be able to communicate with any chain from their single wallet while they're connected to the Ellis app. And what that means is they will have to do some management across those chains as far as like, you know, which tokens they want to participate in. Uh, and this is where Agoric really fits in. The fact that they can just simply, you know, set their strategy based on, okay, like I would like to bring like your, you know, the example you're using, I'd like to bring some Ethereum in. Once that Ethereum makes it onto my chain, I'd like to, you know, add it to a liquidity pool. And then every three days, I would like to take the rewards from that, pull it, and then convert it to USDC and then send it back to, you know, wherever I want it uh, to yeah. final resting place, so to speak. So this is really, really exciting. It, it, fall, it matches perfectly, marries perfectly with our chain abstraction, um, uh, you know, goals here. So I, I think what this is really going to do is kind of allow users to continue to uh, look at the full kind of range of diversification of their portfolio and decide how they want to manage it. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're looking for in terms of, you know, providing from the most conservative all the way to the most aggressive strategies, this is just going to allow them to even fine tune it even more. And then most importantly, take the workload off of them, right? So mm -hmm. the less time that they're pushing buttons and trying to kind of execute individual transactions on their own, the more they can be productive elsewhere or the more they can be productive within their own portfolio. Mm -hmm. Those are really what we're trying to do, right? Enhance productivity. That's, that's really what Web3 is all about. Like, it, you know, it's not just the trust and transparency, but also the productivity that comes along with it. It's, it's an expensive 
you know, in, infrastructure setup, right? Like, so we might as well, might as well take advantage of it and make the most out of it. Um, I, I will say the, the thing that I'm really excited about too, is that, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've kind of brought up as far as like orchestration, orchestration API and, and, uh, and all the technologies you guys are working on seems very, uh, foundational to AI. Right. There, there seems to be a lot of overlap here in terms of what you guys are working on and the big build out in AI. So maybe I don't know if you can speak to that, like how you guys leverage it or what you guys, how you guys see that fitting into your, into your uh, roadmap. So, I mean, you know, definitely it's a, it's a real thing. A lot of programming will happen there. You know, the, the, the programming agents, especially for general purpose stuff are nowhere near as far along as people would like to think, but where they'll be in three years, I mean, it just, it just advances so quickly, but Orchestration, like a lot of middleware, it's more amenable to, you know, for to, to AI programming because it's this confined thing. I need to do these, you know, it's it's partly plumbing, it's partly getting the right pool, it's partly here's the strategy I want, generate these things. Where the nice thing about the orchestration framework is it provides sort of guardrails that make that much more accessible to AI programming, much easier to understand and more accessible to normal human programmers where they could be, you know, where, where they could, um, uh, uh, you know, express their strategies and have those, those be translated in code. And someone can easily verify that, yep, that is what I wanted. Now, this is one of those places where our structure of how orchestration works actually matters for the ease of both that modeling and those programs where, you know, if I want to be able to, you know, make an account over there and put my stuff there, but I still have control of it here. You know, I say, okay, and then, and then once a day do the following thing, right? In our model that, you know, writes that program and it's straightforward because it has this multi-block action. What I just described was, a simple recipe, if you will, you know, do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. And in any other system, in Solidity and Cosmwasm and in Solana, it's an enormous amount of code to kind of, okay, trigger this thing. And now there's a bunch of stream of events. I have to winnow out of that, the thing that's actually in reaction to this and plumb it all together. And even if a smart AI produced just the right thing, you would have no clue what it was doing, right? You just can't tell. You can't have you know show it to your customers if you're an if you're a a, a aggregator and service provider like Ellis. You go, okay, here's this thing. Now I need an you know another AI to tell me whether it did the right thing and an auditor to tell me that it wasn't cheating, as opposed to you know I just wanted something that was five lines of the right code for the specific use case the user wanted. And now I can understand that. And I can understand how it's trivially secure because it simply doesn't have access to the account of anyone except the user that opted into this, right? So I trivially don't have to worry about impacting anyone else. And now I can just reason locally about all these things. And a lot of our, a lot of the way we built large scale systems prior to blockchain, a lot of the design in the in the agoric orchestration stack um you know has been around how you make it so you can make these local designs and local decisions and have them safely composed so orchestration is is that you know orchestration layer for web3 that allows easy composition of these strategies and then ais are just super powered on that kind of thing and so you know we're not you know we're, we've got experiments that we have done and that are doing but heading towards more ai is is after we get orchestration ramped up, extended to ETH, extended to Solana, extended to you know Filecoin, et cetera, et cetera, um, and you know, and then uh, and then we're in a different direction, adding more and more abstraction, more and more composition, and more and more AI smarts. So, yeah, that's that's a phenomenal kind of laying laying of the land there. Like it, you know, the, the the landscape that you presented there is is super exciting because there's so many opportunities here. Um, that is. Uh, you know, I, I, it's amazing to me that we're already we're already <laughs> towards the end of our stream here because I, I was we were just I feel like we were just getting started. Really? Uh, so I, yeah. So I, what I would like to do at this point is open it up for questions uh, because uh, usually like our, our community uh, uh -huh. ends up having about ten minutes worth of questions. I hope I hope we don't if it's if it's okay. Not a problem. I, I have I have it booked for longer, so so we're good. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Okay, I we have... we were told thirty minutes. So <laughs> uh, let's see here. So the first question we have is does agoric also work as a da for the protocols it interacts with um so the, the answer is any blockchain can work as a da so i'd be very interested in a project that wanted to do that that is something that 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 we do expect to do more more deeply in the future where a da for lots of chains that can do their own javascript engine and and, and run independently that's not currently a focus 
Um, but, but, um, you know, but bring us the example, talk to our, you know, early access program, because, you know, that, that's exactly the kind of thing where, hmm, you know, here's what it takes. Let's wire you in and said, I mean, ETH has acted as a DA without having any special support for that. Uh, I know Monad, you know, I was talking to those guys, people are using them as a DA and not using the fact that it's fast execution, you know, so, so, so that's one of those things where, where very interested in what the particular use case is there. All right, thank you. And then uh, how does a user get access to the, uh, or you know, become an early access user of Agoric? Agoric.com, there's plenty of things there. Follow the developer path. Our bit, you know, we, we, we focus on, you know, we're very interested in builders that have a thing they want to build. Um, we've got a, you know, DevRel's team and, and the early access program includes, you know, it, you know, onboarding, helping, there's a path to grants, that kind of stuff. Um, so very excited to have people uh, join there and, and agoric.com slash EAP will get you directly there, but the path through develop through just agoric.com is straightforward. Outstanding. Thank you. And then we will uh, also be, you know, kind of rolling out our first uh, kind of use case with Agoric soon. Uh, hopefully if we can get it in the test net, if not, we'll be right at mainnet launch as we are very, very close to mainnet launch. So um, look to see that kind of uh, available for LS users on our app. Uh, we envision it uh, initially being used for things like automatic restaking. So that, you know, just kind of to get that started because right now, uh, believe it or not, our restake partners that we uh, have been working with don't actually have the technology to restake Ellis. Uh, it's it's a, because our, our model's um, a little bit different than the standard Cosmos SDK staking module. So this is actually going to be a really great uh, first use case for us. So I know yeah. we're working on that behind the scenes with your team and we're pretty excited about that too. And at, at Token 2049, I, I presented this stuff where I showed, you know, oh, there's the org, there's the API, the orchestration API that's out. But the design is, you know, the reason JavaScript's the number one programming language on the planet is it's so extensible and extensions are first class citizens. So we will be adding extensions as we go forward, you know, but, and then with big extensions of reaching out to ETH and connecting Solana and that sort of stuff. But one of the things I showed was a timer example, uh, you know, as a, as a sneak peek of an example of where we're of, of what we can what we can add we can already do timers now so we don't need to add these fancy shiny apis but but the example was exactly restaking where you know it's okay every 24 hours run the daily restaking function what's the daily restaking function and it was three lines of code redeem my rewards how much did i get stake them done having a more fancy thing of redeem my rewards, split it in half, stake half of it, take the other half and sell it for USDC and send that to my to my yield optimizer. Um, you know, that's okay, five lines of code. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's exactly one of those things. So I love, I love the fact, you know, again, you've got core use cases that you're working on that are meaningful and valuable to people. That's exactly what orchestration is all about is, is um, uh, what, you know, there's, there's money in crypto. Orchestration is how you can bring me the money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that, that's, I think that's really the most exciting part is, is these are features that have never been available before. You've never been able to, to execute these types of automated commands uh, up until Agoric kind of came up with the idea. And that's where we can take DeFi to the next level. So it, uh, to me, what I think is really interesting is even, even though DeFi has kind of lost its spot on the main stage, so to speak, you know, because it's being overshadowed by AI and RWAs and things like that, what we're really seeing is that DeFi is going to be more powerful than ever. And it's, and it's going to essentially make a resurgence once people can figure out that they have all these capabilities, right? And right, right. I think, um, you know, you're starting to see this start to, like, it's starting to come back in, in the kind of, in like people's mindsets, but they're looking for hey, I want this in my hands. I'm looking forward to actually using it so I can see what it can do. So well, I, I'm, I'm excited to be an early user. I'm excited to kind of like, you know, create my own, uh, uh, you know, like customized programmability through the orchestration API. I'm, I'm going to talk to every chain I can because this is really why, you know, we uh, envisioned, you know, Ellis in the first place. Yeah. We wanted to make this something where we could get the absolute most uh, that you could possibly do in DeFi. And it doesn't mean that everybody should do it and everybody should should have to you know uh, make things super complex but this really actually makes it more simple for the user that allows them to, to handle various tasks in a very simple manner yeah. you actually touched on a couple things that i like to mention part of the inspiration for orchestration is you know we got connectivity right we were you know we we helped inspire and worked on the first round of ibc um and uh you know and so we now have especially in the interchain we've got you know, hundreds of chains that are all connected to each other with 
celestias and sagas and dimensions and ag layers and all these things, you've got this modular explosion, which is making even more, but they're connected, but you have to hand carry your assets. And so this thing about, you know, DeFi stalling out some, I mean, obviously there's still vast amounts of, of, of activity there, is new users coming in that explosion of chains has fragmented liquidity even more and fragmented the experience even worse. And so when new users are coming in, it's just, you, you, there's just no place to start. And, you know, and if you start somewhere, well, then there's this other interesting thing over there, but I can't use it. So do yeah. I, do I leave, I mean, I, you know, and, and then they just go back to Robinhood and invest in stocks. Right. And so the thing that, you know, this model of rolling it up through a trading interface is a critical one. And the nece the thing that's necessary to make it so we can deliver a more simple experience a smooth and richer experience to these end users is being able to incorporate all of these powerful things where, you know, you guys have made some really interesting DeFi stuff, but, there'll be somebody that has something that is also interesting that would be a great compliment that if you could just include them in to deliver both and deliver the leverage power of the two of them together to your end users, everybody wins. I mean, this is how the rest of uh, the traditional finance works where most exchanges, the trades that happen on them are automated because some other thing aggregated their service and then they have a retail front end that does some of it. Right now in DeFi, most trades are, are retail, which means we are an order of magnitude in transactions at least away from where we could get on the current infrastructure, where 90% of the trades are, are programmatic through some third party, you know, like Ellis that incorporated remotely that other service and rolled it up into a rich, a simple user experience. And so we got a lot of legs available to us in, in DeFi that, that the only way to stitch it all together is with being able to program across these. Yeah, I love this. And, uh, you know, I, I was having this conversation of, uh, with a user who essentially just exclusively uses centralized exchanges. And he says, well, like, why would I ever want to go into the DeFi space when I can do everything I need to do on a centralized exchange? And this is like the perfect thing that will finally motivate somebody to leave a centralized exchange. You know, the comfort and the, and the coziness of a centralized exchange. Now they're going to say, oh, okay, well, I can go and do all these things. Maybe I can get better pricing. Maybe I can get better functionality. I can customize it the way that I like. And now finally self-custody. Uh, and maybe that's the catalyst that gets people moving from centralized, centralized exchange, exchanges over to DeFi. So this is, this is super exciting. I mean, you know, they always say you got to build the roads so people can actually use them, you know, uh, you know drive over, drive onto them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like a... Well, if the demand is not there, why would you build it? Well, you build it and then the demand comes, right? So this is kind of one of those things where I think you do absolutely have to lay the infrastructure down first. And, yeah. you know, that's well, kind of what... And the demand is actually there. The demand is there in the 300 uh, million centralized exchange users that won't even have the conversation about whether it's DeFi or not, right? So a lot of this stuff and most of the, the users later, it's not even going to be a part of the, the train of thought. They're just going to see... There's uh, one platform that performs these tasks, and here's another one that performs the same task. They might not even know which one's centralized exchange and which one's not, and and it's it's great. That means that everybody's doing their job if nobody knows what's going on, right? Just they click a couple times, massive amounts of actions happening in the back, and they just get what they want, right? And in the end, and then when the when the stories are written, well, Ellis did it in a decentralized way, right? In partnership with Agoric. I've loved Dean and Agoric. I put Dean in there since the very, very beginning. And I knew right away that we, we needed a partnership. I didn't know exactly like 15 seconds in, I was in, I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> but then he put code on the screen and I was just like, well, I don't know now. <laughs> but then I actually understood it. And I was like, wait a second on a, I mean, it's so, it makes so much sense. Like why isn't it done everywhere? And how come everybody's off in their because silos? It's really hard. It Turns is out asynchronous that, coordination which, is really hard. <laughs> yes, it is because we didn't realize how much we needed you until <laughs> until we uh, dug into it and, and had a few meetings. But um, and I also want to say that like your passion and this, um, I mean, this innate fire that is <laughs> like lightning through your uh, for your just stuff. through the conversation. But you I mean you're feeling it. You love what you do, and it carries on through the through the product and through the team. And it's, it is this, and you're absolutely um, ideally 
uh, who should be running a company, this energy that doesn't change. And, and I've also in token 2049 saw you annihilate people on stage in, a, in the nicest, most professional way. And I loved it because it was like, uh, it was like, I have these conversations with my son sometimes and I just think, man, you guys, you know, don't know, but I mean, I, I would say there was two or three of them kind of like all ganging up and you just fact by fact, by polite fact, <laughs> checked every single one. And in the end, it was just, there was no conversation to be had. It was either fact or fiction, mm -hmm. you know, which one's which, and you just led with facts and you did it with great energy. I mean, the, delivery, the belief, I mean, this is something obviously that you've been committed to for a very long time. We feel very, uh, you know, we feel really proud to be uh, partnering with you. So, so thank you for that. And uh, yeah, Goric is badass, if I can say that here, um, and and and, de and definitely needed uh, in DeFi, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, this is exciting, and, and and it's really cool that you see interesting features with Ellis, and that we're bringing stuff together, um, and that you're you know decided to work with us uh, fairly quickly, and that that was really nice as well. So thank you for that. Oh, it was great. Uh, I, you know, it, that's one of those things where where I really appreciate the comments. You know, the, the the yes, I'm a technologist at heart. So when you find people that actually understand the impact and the difference a technology can make to the you know to end users and to developers and all that sort of stuff, you know that that as a as a as someone who creates things, you know, as you know, as a builder, right? When people appreciate what you built, it's you know that's the best thing in the world. Um, and so you know we've really you know we've really brought these you know, entirely too many decades of technology to bear um, to help solve this problem of how do we, how do we make it easy to do this cross chain stuff? And, right. and, and you have, you, you deeply understand the cross chain use cases that you want. Um, you know, you see, I mean, we, we all know that there's users out there that have been asking for this. Um, and right. so, so it's not even a, if we build it, they will come. It's, it's, you know, they're here. We just they're we need to build it so we can serve them. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They're here. And they would be uh, lots of people that we know, right, in our circles that we can't talk about DeFi and have these three-hour-long conversations, and then the four-hour combo of how to where's their passphrase? It's cut up in eight pieces over here, and you know what do you click to get over here? And now there's a treasure hunt. You know what I mean? Let's simplify it a little bit. So uh, yeah, no, I love it, and uh, I and I still think and I believe it today that uh, Agoric is going to be one of the most active partnerships that we have, hands down. I just I see that the possibilities are endless. We've just like scratched the surface. If, if I can add a, a a story that that your one of the comments earlier made me think of that I haven't thought of in a long time, a, an analogy to credit cards, right? Because I use the example for for orchestration and for chain abstraction. Chain abstraction is sort of is you know users want to use this stuff, but they don't care about our underlying tribes or technologies or whatever. I use the example of you know when a user wants to use an app to buy a hamburger and get it delivered, they don't care whether it runs on Amazon or Google. They just want to you know pay for it, right? But, you know, the credit card thing, you, you know, uh, you, you may or may not remember the days before Visa where, you know, you'd go to some places and this one will take Bank America credit card and this one will take Chase credit card and this one will take Wells, but they won't take, you know, USBC or whatever it is. Right. Yep. And, uh, you know, and that was exactly the fragmented experience. And then DHOC brought together this Visa consortium to solve this problem. And it was money abstraction. And now, you know, that analogy where I say, you know, push a button and get a, get a hamburger. The thing is, that also works in France, right? Or if I swipe a credit card to get a hamburger, you know, the user experience is simple. It's abstracted. But behind the scenes, there's foreign exchange and money conversions and credit risks all being managed at a global scale and all this sort of stuff that I trigger by swiping a credit card. Right. And so that simple experience, you know, that, that is, you know, came together in this credit card world, you know, where where now in some sense, you know, this agoric orchestration is the stripe that brings it the next level up to make it easy to access that credit card world from a programmer's point of view. And from an app point of view, we're, you know, we enable making it easy to access that that extended universe of crypto stuff from a programmer point of view. So you can deliver the simple user experience of swipe a credit card and get a hamburger. Right. <laughs> And um, uh, and so I'm really, you know, there's a really natural sort of pairing of that infra and the and, and the user facing uh, um, services that leverage it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I'll, I'll say, ironically enough, in the early days of Web3, it was almost seen as a rite of passage to have to go through the very technical and complex uh, steps that you had to take. Right. It was almost, it was almost like, well, if you don't want to be in the club, if you don't want to go through all the 
the, the, the steep learning curve to be one of us, then, then you're not welcome. <laughs> right. And, That's right. Um, you and, know, I, <laughs> it's one of those things where, you know, anytime I tried to help a colleague or a family member or a friend, you know, get into web three, uh, you know, uh, about maybe five to 10 steps in, they'd give up and say, well, you know, I don't, <laughs> I'll come back when it's a little bit easier. <laughs> so uh -huh. this is, uh -huh. uh, it's great to see that the tides have finally turned and we have uh, a real focus on this. I, I think that that really has been one of the things. And I don't blame anybody, any of the early pioneers for, for, you know, being overly technical because that's obviously what you need in that first phase, right? You need the, the technology to come in and really, um, disrupt right you got to go in yeah, and start yeah. making all these like very very bold and novel you know technological kind of experiments so to speak and then eventually you you can kind of pave the way for the next step which is other people come in you got your yeah, early yeah. adopters and finally the mainstream and i think now that we're starting to see that that shift towards you know okay bringing the mainstream in you're starting to see real like problems being addressed with with like real solutions versus problems that were maybe manufactured maybe problems that were kind of like not really problems that teams were kind of taking on and saying we want to tackle this uh so i love that agoric is actually tackling an actual problem that is going to benefit society in, in a very very large way especially when you think of how many assets are coming over whether it be through rwas or whether it be from the uh from the tradfi world into DeFi. Uh, that's going to be several trillion dollars. You know, they're saying it could be it could be thirty trillion dollars or more in the next ten yeah. to fifteen years, and so this is a real problem that needs to get solved now. Right? It, mm -hmm. needs, it needs to be ready to go for for that mainstream adoption. So I, I really appreciate that focus. Oh, you know what we could do? We could do um, the same thing that my cousin did, which is how it was about fifty friends and family members come over. This was in like late twenty twenty. And everybody wanted to get in, you know, it was catching on. Everybody knew that he was early on Bitcoin. He had been saying Bitcoin since 2014. So of course, everybody wanted to know what's going on. So everybody went over there. Uh, he entertains often and he said, okay, cool. So he, he committed almost three hours to show everybody how to LP, how to state, how to claim. I mean, there's a lot of people, a lot of different thought processes, tons of different questions. Out of those almost 50 people, two people walked out knowing what was going on. The rest of them did not, but they walked right. out full. And yeah. then the two, the two that did know what's going on, I know them I personally, they didn't know how to find it later. Uh -huh. So this is all, it's very, very important that just those 50 people showed up and that's a pretty, a very small scale, but that's what's ha gonna happen is it's easier now. It's easy to remember how to log on through account abstraction and then yeah. chain abstraction. You have to remember this and that. It's huge. I mean, this yeah. is so big. It's yep. so, so big. So we're going to run this as soon as we go live and we do, do like the a little bit of maintenance once we first launch and then we'll call those same 50 people over. And <laughs> how many more? Here's the button for stake. Here's fun. the button for yield. Here's the button for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm interested to see how many people know then. I bet tons more. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, if, if you think about it, like every platform that's successful doesn't need a handbook it doesn't need a documentation you know repo that people have to go and like read you know just spend several hours on if anything they should be able to kind of self-navigate and then if they need if there's a, an area where they'd like to dig a little deeper sure they can go visit the documents or maybe just quickly tap on a tool tip and then it kind of gives them a little more information that's that's the optimum user experience it keeps them productive it keeps them on, on task um and that's what we're shooting for right we're, we're trying to make sure that people's time is, is being is being respected right? you got to respect mm -hmm. people's time so yep. um that that's what I, that's what i really love about this is we're, we're solving a time problem right and, and this is um this is probably one of the things that doesn't get talked about enough is that time is the thing here right that that really <laughs> um, generates so much more opportunity for people and if we can kind of continue to go down that path and, and really optimize that you know, we might see people completely fully automating their portfolios through Agoric uh, on Alice Network, and then never even having to do anything. Right? They they could, they could simply they could simply just check on it every once in a while just to make sure it's on track. And then if they need to make an adjustment here and there, they just go in and change uh, the particular uh, contract through Agoric, and then uh, check back on it periodically. Right? They can essentially be their own advisor or their own uh, manager, and not have to necessarily. Um, you know, sit there and kind of uh, double check it every day or whatever, gives them more time with their family, gives them more time with their other professions, gives them more time with their projects that they're working on. 
Uh, and that, that's really, I think, um, you know, you're solving not just a, 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 an actual infrastructure issue with DeFi, you're solving like a quality of life problem too, which I think is really fantastic. Yeah, yeah and can quality of life development. Questions, uh, Shem, can you see the community questions? See if there's any more, we don't wanna leave anybody out. Uh, yeah, so I think we, we hit most of them. Uh, I don't see any new ones, so I think we're uh, pretty good on questions. Unless anybody wants to add something real quick, we can we can get to those. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we're at about the fifty minute mark. So um, I think I think we did cover a lot of ground today, which I'm really excited about. You know, we just announced this partnership what yesterday or two days ago. Yeah. So yep. mm -hmm. uh, it's very fresh. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, a lot more on this, especially going forward um, as we get to meet. Well, launch. we've been talking also. I mean, for a couple months. So. <laughs> Ab this. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So th yes. this is um, yeah. It's it's a it's a great start to uh, hopefully a very fruitful relationship. Uh, we'll you know Ellis Network will be launching this quarter, so we are. We're going to be main that launch uh, as early as next month, uh, and then with you guys, um, maybe can you give like, kind of our users like cool. a three to six month uh, kind of timeline of what what you guys are going to be doing, and then uh, you know if uh, if if you all drop some alpha here right at the end, you know I think the users might appreciate that too. <laughs> uh, alpha at the end, I don't know. Um, uh, you know, Re reward the, the users who've been here for the. <laughs> right. for the well, generation. you know, I mean, <laughs> another a. a, a I, I, other, you know, other than we are humming along doing fast USDC, where the idea is that plums in nicely in the process of doing that, you know, some, some of the way we do these projects with, with, with folks is we go, okay, what's the, you know, what's the pattern that emerges that people need, you know, that in, in a common fashion, right? So I need to be able to send my USDC back over to ETH. Well, here's the library you can call to make that happen. Right. Or, you know, I want, to have an address on a Gork that I can just send to, and it triggers arbitrary JavaScript actions in an orchestration contract. Well, we already have one way to do that, where you construct a, you know, make a new account and just say, here's the JavaScript I want to run when assets arrive there, and I have metadata that says where it all came from. So, oh, this came from ETH, or this came over Axelar, or Wormhole, whatever it is, I'm gonna now trigger the, it's from Wormhole and it's Solana token, I'm gonna go send it over here and do something with it, right? So that facility's already there, but there are some interesting, exciting enhancements in progress to make it even more flexible to do orchestration contracts that are sort of, you know, triggerable in interesting ways remotely already from other ecosystems or any other chain um, to then receive assets and then go act on them, right? And so we're really working on and interested in these, you know, do the transfer and then make a thing happen, like put it in, you know, in into, um, uh, you know, one of your, uh, Vault-like things, or you know, mint a stable on it, and then go do something with it, or what have you. And so, you know, there, there, there are more of these components coming that will accelerate these particular use cases that our early access partners are finding to be valuable. So, um, so the one that lets us do more, you know, easier reach from ETH earlier, very is 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 very exciting. So. Awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dean. I really appreciate everything um, that you've kind of shared with us today. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be partners with Agoric, and uh, you know I hope we can do these regularly. If if uh, if you're if you have the time, I know you guys are extremely busy, but if you have the time yeah, to come yeah, on yeah. with us and, and kind of share updates every once in a while, we'd love that. Yep, and occasionally yep. throw a product under the bus and have them show up and talk to you, and and you know, and particularly as we <laughs> identify new things, happy to come talk to the community about here's what's here's what we're doing with Ellis and that that, that inspired this new thing, and it's really cool, and you know, I mean, I think that you know, uh, I. I I'm I'm very looking forward to continuing the collaboration where you know you guys know what you you know you understand what we're doing you know how to use it and apply it to actually get value that's that's what we're all here for and so happy to come talk about that. There's so, so, much so much going through my head. There's different programs we could launch <laughs> with with rewards and staking. They could be, yeah. you know, like the credit cards, like you said. We could even implement the seasonal ones, like January through March. I mean, it could get very consumer. It could get very like could launch their own missions for staking rewards and for uh, restaking and stuff. I mean, it's amazing. And I, yeah. will, I, I will pull this back. So one of the things this does is it enables all these things and I love that we can do that. All of us together are focused on delivering, you know, here's an MVP key use case that demonstrates how this adds value, how it integrates into Agora, how Ellis brings it to users, those kinds of things. So, you know, we're all about, you know, delivering this in chunks of actual utility uh, to yeah. folks. 
But yeah, it's amazing where, you know, like compounding interest, like compounding staking, compounding component, you know, compounding software that adds value, you know, multiplicatively is going to get us way farther than, than, than anyone thinks. So I'm looking forward to that. Hmm. Very cool. I'm excited. Outstanding. Well, all thank right. you all. Thank your audience for watching. Good to meet you, the Ellis community. And, uh, you know, we'll, 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 you'll hear more from us. Thank you, right. Dean. Thank you, Dean. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Really appreciate it.